Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we have a fun little project, an experiment that I am going to be doing in the garden over probably at least like the next year. Uh, what am I going to be doing? Well, Jerry and I went to Illinois the other week to the headquarters of Proven Winners. They had a summit of some of the folks that work with them. And while we were there, we had some meetings, of course, and on the table were these cute little quart-sized containers of the tater tot arborvitae. And so, we, of course, I took them home because they, they were meant for us to take home. So these sweet little tater tots, <laughs> we got two of them, one for me and one for Jerry, got loaded up into his suitcase, flew home from Illinois. They've been hanging out outside for the past couple of weeks. And today I am going to pot them up into two containers and then surround them with some beautiful pansies and have them out by the front porch. Now you're like, Jimmy, that's not really much of an experiment. Like, what are you talking about, woman? Well, Tater Tot is a cute little, and I say cute because it is little, um, this little arborvitae because it is only going to get one to two feet tall and wide. We've had tons of people at the nursery ask us if we have Tater Tot. We don't, we've never grown it before because it is hardy in zones three to seven. We're North Carolina zone 7B. So when something is only hardy to a zone 7 and I'm a 7B and I'm in the south, then I get really kind of like iffy and I don't want to invest a whole bunch, a bunch of money or sell a plant to a customer if I don't know that it's going to do well here. So that's what the experiment is going to be. And because these are little quart size plants, I'm going to put them into these decorative containers along with the pansies. That way they can go ahead and grow and get bigger. And if they survive and do, not just survive, but if they thrive and do well, you know, in the next maybe year or so, um, to get nice size to them, then I will plop them into the landscape to see how they do there. So that is what we are going to do. I will tell you that we are uh, <laughs> trying to beat the rain that is coming. Megan is my handy dandy camera lady today. So she has an umbrella behind us, uh, behind the camera. So she is my assistant. Um, so we're gonna get these potted up. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. I'm gonna do it in real time and, um, then we're going to show you a little bit on the front porch what we have been doing. She and I had some, a lot of fun going through and decorating our large aqua pot that is on the front porch. So that was a lot of fun. So I will show you that. Um, so we're going to get these containers filled up with the Proven Winners potting soil. Um, this is my favorite potting soil. I use this for all my containers. It just does really well for us in our area with our climate, with our constant rain, especially in the you know the winter time. Tons and tons of rain here. Um, like I said, it's going to start raining tonight. It's going to rain tomorrow, and then every day for the rest of this week we have rain chances. Not that it's going to be a complete washout, but it is going to rain. So let me get these to fill it up with some soil. I know this may not be in the shot and that's okay, we'll just cut it. Nope, you can see it. Oh, let it off. Just worse yet to come. Just put this on. All right, so. Of course, you know, you got one bag of soil. Like, oh, that'll be plenty for both pots. Well, wouldn't you know, it was just short just a little bit. So Megan's gonna go grab me some more soil that we can get the other one done. While she's doing that, we'll go ahead and pot up this first one. So I'm super excited to try these little tater tots. I mean, they're just the cutest little thing. And then of course the name, I mean, you can't beat the name tater tot. So there we go. So here she comes. Thank you, ma'am. We'll pop that oven off in a second. Now, 
where would you use this cute little tater tot? Well, this is definitely because it is an evergreen, as all arbs are, It'd be a great evergreen. And because of its petite size, it would do really, really well as like the front of like in the flower bed as a foundation planting. Love arbs as foundation plantings because they just do so well. Um, they're very hardy, really, you know, no bugs, no pests, really are kind of foolproof, easy peasy. And at this size, you're not going to have to be pruning it like constantly, right? So it's very easy to deal with, no pruning needed. It does, um, it is great for containers, borders, edging, and mass planting. And then, of course, because it's an evergreen, it has four seasons of interest. So it doesn't matter if it's spring, summer, fall, or winter, you're gonna have some great interest with your, um, with your arbs. So what we're gonna do, like I said, is take these little guys out, and you can see they have a great root system, right? So really nice, strong, healthy root system in that quart. If this is the size that we get as a grower, so we could easily move this up to a one gallon, two, or even a three gallon if we wanted to. But today I am going to improvise because I could have done that and then waited, right? Waited for a year or so until it filled it out. And then I could have just, um, you know, put it directly in the landscape. But what fun is that? Might as well go ahead and use it for a little bit of interest. Now, I know, is this gonna be like the most stunning container ever? No, probably not. But is it gonna be a lot of fun and is it gonna serve my purpose on to see if this plant does well in our climate? It sure is, absolutely. So, here we have some great white pansies. I got 10, because I'm thinking maybe like five per container and I would love to say that at the beginning of the season when I was planting the sweet yellow violas on the other side of the front porch that I had this great master plan in mind. I didn't. Um, but we've planted of course here lately the yellow and white pansies down near the entrance to the nursery and then I have some left over, so I'm going to use the rest of them in the berm. So we're gonna continue that whole theme of the white and yellow in kind of this front part of the house and the entrance to the nursery. Pansies and violas are wonderful annuals for us that are definitely cool weather. Because we are in North Carolina, I can plant these beginning really kind of like in September, end of September, all the way through the spring and use them. And they will give us flowers and interest throughout the whole like winter months. It is wonderful. So here I have my little tater tot is down in the center, surrounded by five white pansies. Really simple, it's gonna go on the front. That way they'll get as much sun as I possibly can because pansies and violas are full sun plants. And uh, yeah, so it'll be really fun to watch these grow and develop. So we've got one now and one to go. That's the thing about gardening, right? Is that it really can be a year round sport. I really suppose though, depending on where you live. I think sometimes we, we just, um, we get so inside of our own little world that we forget that other people have, you know, that everybody else isn't just like us um, and what our lives are like. So for me in North Carolina, I think, you know, I, I forget that some people can't garden year round. You know, you could be covered in snow and it's frozen and you're not going to see your ground until, you know, April or May. So we are blessed here in North Carolina, in the South, that we really can garden year round. Um, our ground never really freezes, so we can do fun things in the garden all year round. So the next cute little tater tot goes in there. I am gonna, when I finish both of these, I am going to top dress the container with the uh, mixture that Jerry and I have gotten. It is a 60-40 blend, so it is 
40% compost, 60% um, aged pine bark pines. I think that's the right way. It could be the other way around. Anyway, it's a 60-40. We're using it, um, gonna use it as like mulch top dressing. We did that in the berm. So I'm going to go through and top dress these containers with that mixture as well. Here we go. Got two more little pansies to go. And we're getting it in there. I don't know about y'all, but it's hard for me to believe that it's... <laughs> oh my gosh. Christmas is right around the corner. It was yesterday. Yesterday? What day was it? One day. One day this week. I forget what day it was. I don't even know what today is. Um, and they were like, yeah, Christmas is like less than three weeks away. Oh my goodness. It is crazy. All right. So here we go. So I have got the little tater tots in there surrounded by the pansies. Now, um, my potting soil was already damp, so I'm not going to worry about watering it. And like I said, we are trying to beat the rain. We're going to get rain tonight, all tonight, and then all throughout the week. So I am not going to worry about watering this. It is fine. This is December. It is not August. It is not July. They will be just fine. They will not get waterlogged whatsoever. So we're going to move these over to the steps of the porch. And um, then I'm going to show you what Megan and I did and give you a little update on those cute little yellow violas that we planted over there um, underneath the porch. All right, so we've got both of the little containers placed here by the front porch. I went ahead and pulled them out further away from the house simply because of our winter sun is very different than our summer sun, like most people's is. And so I need, in, in order for the pansies to get the sun, I have to pull them away from the house so that they can get that sun. Here they are in the front of the house. Um, and <laughs> you can see we've got, just make a very simple statement, folks. You know what? Gardening does not have to be complicated and involved at times. Uh, we were having lunch today uh, in the house, of course, and I was talking with Jerry and Megan and I was like, you know, last week for us, we got three major projects done in three days. We did like, we fixed your driveway with the drainage. We got the pansies planted at the entrance and then we got the berm mulched. So three massive products, uh, projects that we were like exhausted with. So I said, where last week was like, <laughs> kill ourselves. This week is gonna be nice, light, easy little projects. And that is exactly what today is. Everything in moderation, my friends, you gotta pace yourselves. So uh, my plan is, my hope is, is that these little white pansies will fill in quite nicely as I really think they will. The little um, tater tots will have time to get nice new root growth and development in there and become very happy. And just give me a nice little splash of color here on the front porch. Now, speaking of the front porch, I keep my Christmas decorations very simple, y'all. This time of year, I'm tired. That's just, that's just the bottom line. <laughs> I'm tired. And um, so we just keep it really simple. But I do want to show you um, this fun container here that Megan and I literally did uh, right before we started the video. I have, of course, my aqua pot here that I've had for several years here. And um, so let me just explain to you what everything is. Now, I will say that I spent zero dollars on this arrangement today. Now, did I have some money, you know, in, in earlier times? Absolutely. Like the aqua pot. Yes, I bought the aqua pot, but it's been here for, like I said, maybe four years now. Um, and then the little decorations, the artificial decorations in the container were left over from many Christmases ago. So I re had saved them and recycled them. What we have in the center is our centerpiece here, our height. That is a Thuja Green Giant that I am borrowing from the nursery. It is still in its three gallon container, just sitting down inside the aqua pot. And then everything else we went and foraged in the, either the garden or the woods around us. So all of this is off of our property. All wild, I mean, just right, it's just out there and we just went and grabbed it. So we have, of course, magnolia leaves. We, <laughs> we're in North Carolina, you gotta have some magnolias. So we've got magnolias in there. 
We have got, these are off of my cryptomerias in the back. You know, those gorgeous, massive trees. I love this. Look at the tips of them. How fun is that? And so this is one branch and I actually turned it upside down. So on the tree, it was the other way. So it was swooshing up. Now it's trailing down. But look at that. Such a fun little interest on the, um, on the foliage. I love that. Then of course, every year I do use my limelight hydrangea blooms. I just went down to my limelight by the creek and cut off five blooms, pop them in there really nice. We've got some wild holly from the woods, of course, and then this is a cedar. So there is cedar in there also from the woods. And then I would love to say, oh yeah, we have berries growing like this around here. Yeah, no. <laughs> Hobby Lobby grew those berries for me, as did the fun little twisty twirlies and the fun little sticks with all of the interest. But I mean, you know, for going out in your yard and, you know, just finding some fun, just colors and textures. I wish I had something blue. That would have been from my Berkey, but I'm trying to get those to grow. And if I had gone in there and cut limbs off of them, one, I don't want to, but then Jerry would absolutely shoot me. <laughs> so we gotta let them grow a little bit, gotta let them grow a little bit more before I start cutting on them. But you're looking for, you know, colors and textures and shapes and what's, you know, really upright and what's down. Um, but it just makes a really fun, I think a very, very pretty arrangement. And the, the way that we have them in there is that the, I left the soil is still in there from um, my planting this summer. I have not emptied this out yet. So I left all the soil in there. That way it acts as a holder for all of those limbs. Um, the green giant is in its container, just sitting in the soil. And then the soil's holding everything else in. Um, yeah. So there you go. So that is that. Now I want to come on down here and I want to share with you an update on how the violas are doing. You were with me when I planted these violas, I believe. And um, man, look at that. They are some happy, cheery little flowers for sure. The weeds are coming. <laughs> the winter weeds are coming in there. I came in there and um, limbed, uh, got some weeds out. There's still some in there. But that's just the thing you have to do, right? You have to come through your garden and walk through and just check on everything. Pull those little pesky little weeds before they get too big. This is, if you're not familiar, this is a dwarf um, horseman, a blue atlas cedar. This tree absolutely loves this spot. It's only been in here for mm, two years, I believe, and really branching out quite nicely beautiful foliage on it the color is just fantastic um it is got really short little needles on it that beautiful kind of that bluish color love it and then of course behind it are the tea olives the sweet osmanthus and you can see that they have some blooms on them that is what is so wonderful one of the things that is so wonderful about the tea olives is that they are a fall winter early spring bloomer and those tea tiny little white flowers give off the most delicious fragrance it is just magical clearly these are evergreens they will get nice and big i prune them once a year that will be in um, late spring and just keep them nice and thick and tight you can see that is another tea olive right here was planted at the same time as these guys they had this one has not been pruned at all this year i will prune it it is much larger because at the base of that tea olive is um, where our dehumidifier from underneath the house it is where it drains so it gets a constant supply of water especially in the summertime so um, it is a very, very happy tea olive for sure. Emily is home, so my alarm is going off alerting me. Um, but yeah, so you know, whether you're in the garden doing some sort of like massive project or you're just gonna come and do some sort of little container or if you're just gonna go and walk through your yard, maybe it's covered in snow, but get out there, enjoy it, bundle up, get your toboggan, get your scarf, get your mittens, get your animals out there and just go for a walk even if it's only you know to go get the mail or something just get outside get some fresh air oh it does the body good to get outside as always we so appreciate you for uh, gardening with creekside y'all have a great day we'll see you in the next video bye friends